Hello, I'm Atubo Just Now, today is Friday. Praise God. Let me tell you this. Sit down this weekend. Go through all the series I've been talking about. And let it stir up a hunger to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. To know Him for yourself. Not what any man has said to you. Are you hearing me? Let's make our demands today. Say after me, say, Heavenly Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread today. In Jesus' name, amen. And it's coming right to you. You will not miss it. You know why you will not miss it? Because you have asked. He said, he that asks will receive. So you're receiving a miracle today. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we give you praise because your word is growing in us. And we are experiencing the manifestation of your truth, which is life. Thank you for burdens are being lifted right now. Yokes are being destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. John chapter 17. John chapter 17 and verse 3. Jesus speaking here. And I've said this before. This is the holiest chapter in the Bible. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah. I say that, and I believe so. And this is life eternal. Wonderful. This is what we hope for. This is the purpose of Jesus coming. And Jesus speaking clearly says, This is life eternal. What is it? That they might know thee. The only true God. If you are still wondering, maybe there are other gods who you are not serious. You haven't come into him yet. It says that he might they might know that the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Everyone who carries the testimony of Jesus Christ knows this beyond the shadow of doubt that Jesus is the Christ and two that he is the one God sent and three he is the one that obeyed the father fully even to death yeah that's why he is now qualified he, you see, he was ordained to bring us life. But by his complete obedience to the Father, he was qualified. See, so two things there, the ordination and then the qualification. By that qualification, he was physically now given the authority to give life to us. Here's what Jesus said to me. He said, my people yet don't understand what I mean. My eye came to give them life. And that's why they have still not believed in my word. The Lord spoke to me and said, son, I am the resurrection. That is my name, the resurrection. And when he said that to me, my whole mind opened up. And I said, you are the resurrection. The same way that when Jesus walked with the disciples, the, the, the Pharisees were angry with them. saying, you guys don't keep the Sabbath. And Jesus said, hey, you are looking at the Lord of the Sabbath. What does that mean, the Lord of the... The one who's going to judge people who did not keep the Sabbath is the one that is here and is eating with his disciples. <laughs> so who are you going to report to? <laughs> and Jesus said to me, he says, Son, I am the resurrection. That is my name. So what do you see in me? Brothers and sisters, what do we see? 
when we look at Jesus? Do we see the one? He, he, he told Martha two things. Sadly, we have believed and accepted only one. He says, anyone who believes in me, even though he dies or is dead, he will rise again. That is a hope. Then he says, anyone who believes in me and is alive shall not die. Brothers and sisters, that is the finality of eternal life. Why don't we believe in it? See, because our mind is always fighting with the spirit of death. It's a God of this world that has so magnified itself. And because we lack understanding, why do we lack understanding? Because we don't stay with him. We see, the Bible says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is of God, Roman, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us of God. He said, which things also we speak. Then he says, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. What's he saying? When we come to Jesus and Jesus begins to speak with us, speak with us you don't use the interpretation of man. You see, I'll tell you this. The gospel, the way we believe the gospel is this. The moment you believe it, you increase. The gospel doesn't come down to your level for you to understand it. No, you need to increase your IQ. You need to increase your intelligence level to believe the gospel and to understand it. You don't wait until, I need somebody to break this thing down to me. And then, they, now in trying to break it down, they now make it something of the flesh. Ah, uh -huh. now I understand. You didn't understand. You accepted an understanding that was suitable for you, that, that was okay for you. But you didn't fully understand what he was saying. When you understand, you have grown. When you understand, you grow. That's what happens. That's how our lives are changed. When you understand, say, whoa, whoa. Most times you find yourself saying, if this is so, why then? Yeah, now you have come to understanding. You don't understand the things of the spirit by, hmm, uh -huh. now I understand. Praise God, I understand. No, sir, if you understand these things, you will, it will start another wrestling in your spirit. You begin to ask yourself, how come everybody have not been preaching this? How come, it, it seems everybody has been lying to me. It seems everybody, ah, who, what's going on? That's what's going on in your mind. That's what's going on in your spirit. And a new an understanding doesn't bring settlement, in, you know, like you think. It brings another level of agitation in your spirit. Why? Why? How? What's going on? How come nobody have preached this? How come we were not told this thing? Yeah. And God says, now get up and go and preach it. Get up and go and preach it. That's what, what happened to me when the Lord began to talk to me. He said, look, I am the resurrection. What do you see in me? I said, Lord, Lord, is, is what I'm thinking what you're thinking? You know, like, I, 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 am I thinking what you're thinking? <laughs> Praise God. You are the resurrection and the life. Mm. You are the resurrection and the life. Okay, he is the resurrection. Now, what does it mean he's the resurrection? He will resurrect. Okay, he is also the life. What does it mean he's the life? He will hold your life that you will not need to be resurrected. Kalabaya, shakalaya. He says, I am the resurrection 
and I am the life. What do you see in me? That's the question. Of the Lord. And I, I didn't see this in the Bible. Praise God. I'm telling you, fellowshipping with the Lord. And he said that to me. And I said, Lord, I see life. I see life. I see life. Paul speaking, he said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. So Paul says, I want to know the power of his resurrection. Because uh, Paul saw him as the resurrection. Most of the disciples of Jesus saw him as the resurrection. But brothers and sisters, when are we going to grow in knowledge? Because he says this is life eternal, that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ. Now what am I telling you? This is the knowledge of Jesus Christ. What do you see in him? What do you know in him? He said to me, I am the resurrection and the life. What do you see in me? When we begin to see him as the life, alakaya, then, then you know what that means? You see, when we see him as the resurrection, it means we see death. Are you getting what I'm saying? When we see the resurrection, it means somewhere along the line, death is going to visit. And when death visits, then he is going to resurrect. But hey, Agiada Sia Brana Sobrokoshia. Now, when we see him as the life, when you look at the sun, do you see shadows? No, no, try it. Go out, look at the sun and try to look for a shadow. When you look at the sun, you will not see any shadow. All you see is brightness, brightness, brightness. But when something begins to block the sun, then you begin to see shadows. Oh, wow. Because you're looking for the sun. You see shadow over here. You see shadow over there. The shadow you see is exactly what is blocking the sun. Because the sun will reflect on that thing. Then it was, That thing is darkness to you. Because there's sun behind that thing, then you see shadows. Brothers and sisters, it's time we get up from the place of seeing shadows. It's time to begin to look at him and see who he really is. To us that are alive, he is life. He is the life. He is the, he's not the life giver. He is the life. And the more we know him, the more we accept his word into us, the more we fellowship with him. Brothers and sisters, can I say this deeper? Fellowshipping with him is not just reading the Bible. I told you before, after reading, it's important you read because everything is written for our learning. It will increase your hope, praise God. But after reading it, close the book and say, Lord, oh yeah, it is time to talk to me. If these things that are, this should be your challenge. If these things written inside here is true, then you who spoke to these people, you need to speak to me. If these things written, if these things experienced, brothers and sisters, aren't you tired? living life like a normal human being aren't you tired facing the same situations everybody is facing aren't you tired when are you going to get tired of dying when are you going to get tired of just just suffering the same thing every other person when are you going to get tired of being in debt when are you going to get tired of getting sick when are you going to get life has been given to us brothers and sisters it has been given what do you see If, 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 if this is true, then what, what happened to all those men of God that have died? You're still seeing shadows, brothers and sisters. That's what you're seeing. You're still seeing shadows. It's shadow you're looking at. You're not looking at the sun. You are not. You see, because you're making reference to him with others now. It's shadows you're looking at. What do you see in him? Who is he to you? Until you see him for who he is. Ah, Then, life. Now I'm talking about the manifestation of our calling. What is the manifestation of our calling? We taking up his word, taking him for who he is. Our eyes opening to see who he is. And then we climbing up. 
to him. We rise up to him. Hallelujah. We rise to him. He says he has already manifested this. And that's why he's commanded us to preach. And that's exactly what I'm doing to you now. I'm preaching. I'm preaching. I'm telling you this truth. Receive receive his light receive his life let him fill your heart let him fill your heart with his words what do you mean that's why he said let the words of christ dwell in you richly 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 i just told you something he told me he said i'm the resurrection and i'm the life what do you see in me he spoke those words to me not a man of god not a reading i read he spoke those words to my hearing and i said lord i see life i see the life in you and and guess what the Lord began to instruct me, I am covered. And that's one thing we need to know. What you choose will determine the kind of instructions you begin to receive. Our time is up. Hear me. Go sit down, watch these videos, listen to this message until the Spirit of God stirs something inside of you. I'll see you on Monday. Or oh, those of you joining us at 12 today, I'll see you by 12. God bless you. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.